In this lecture, we're going to use quantum mechanics to help us understand the formation of bonds and we're going to examine the potential energy during the formation of bonds. So first, let's recall some basic information regarding point electric charges and the potential energy as a result of these point electric charges. Now, for two point electric charges, we can describe their potential energy using the following equation. So the potential energy as a result of two stationary point charges is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi multiplied by epsilon naught. So we have a constant multiplied by Q1 times Q2 divided by R, where Q1 and Q2 are their charges and R is the separation distance between those two point charges. Now let's suppose we have two charges that are like charges. So we either have two positive charges or two negative charges. In such a case, if we graph the potential energy U on the X, Y axis where the X axis is the separation distance R and the Y axis is the potential energy U, we get the following curve. So for two like point charges, the potential energy becomes more positive. So it increases as the separation distance between them decreases as they approach one another. On the other hand, if we have two unlike charges, for example, a positive charge and a negative charge, for two unlike point charges, the potential energy becomes more negative. It decreases as these two point charges approach one another. And this basically means that as the two point charges approach one another, it requires more energy to separate those point charges. And that is described by the following diagram, where the y-axis is the potential energy and the x-axis is our separation distance r. So as the distance decreases, we see that our potential energy becomes more negative. Now, let's actually describe the potential energy diagram for the formation of the simplest covalent bond between two H atoms. So we're describing the formation of the covalent bond inside the diatomic hydrogen molecule. So let's begin with diagram one. So in diagram one, we have two individual H atoms that are separated by some distance and we're assuming the distance is relatively far. So these two diagrams basically describe the probability distribution or the probability density for our electron. So these dashed lines basically represent a high probability of finding our electron with this particular volumetric region. So in diagram one, we basically have our two hydrogen atoms that are found far away. So that means our atom is found somewhere within this particular region. Now as the atoms begin to approach one another, the electron density of one atom is attracted to the nucleus, to the proton found in the nucleus of the second atom and vice versa. And that, me and that means as they approach, our energy energy decreases, it becomes more negative. And remember, as energy decreases, our molecule becomes more stable. Now, it turns out that there is an optimal separation distance at which there is a maximum overlap between the electron clouds, between the dense electron density of our two atoms. And this leads to the most stable configuration, to the most stable molecular electron cloud. And that means our molecule at this particular point is 
the lowest in energy. So basically this is our distance given by R0 within the following diagram. So as our two individual atoms begin to approach one another, their energy begins to decrease and as the electron clouds begin to overlap, eventually we reach a point at which our radius is given by R0 and at this point there is maximum overlap between our two electron clouds of the two individual atoms and in this point our diatomic H molecule is actually formed. Now at this point the electrons concentrate at the center between our two protons between our two nuclei with the highest probability and this causes the strongest possible attraction forces between the protons in our two nuclei of the individual atoms and this center region here. Now if we continue pushing our atoms even closer we begin squeezing the electron density out of the center as shown in diagram 3 and as we squeeze this electron density out of the center what happens is these two protons in the in the two nuclei are now exposed to one another and that means because we have two like charges as per this diagram our energy will begin to increase because when we have two like charges in this case two protons that will increase the energy of our molecule and that's exactly why we have this increase in energy if we continue pushing our two atoms past the radius given by R0. Now at this particular point when the radius is given by R0, this change in energy is known as the binding energy and this binding energy represents the energy that needs to be inputted into our molecule to actually separate our two atoms to an infinite distance away. So this is known as the bond dissociation energy or the binding energy of our molecule.